Hi everyone, welcome back to our Mist AI driven SD WAN configuration guides. My name is Shai Donovich uh, and I'm a solution architect here at Juniper on the Mist AI driven enterprise team. Um, this is going to be section four of part two uh, a hub and spoke VPN traffic flow. This is where we're going to look at how we create steering profiles uh, and application policies in order to allow traffic flow uh, from spoke to hub uh, or hub to spoke using our overlay tunnels, um, the VPN network. Um, and with that, let's get going. So uh, in previous section, what we did, we um, uh, this is our uh, first use case uh, where we have this uh, simple host uh, on site one, which is our spoke. Uh, site 1 LAN 0 um, and we wanted to send traffic to uh, hub A LAN 0. Uh, it's a host connected on the hub side um, and for that we have uh, created uh, uh, both these uh, networks um, spokes LAN 0 uh, and then uh, this network on the hub and we also created uh, applications that represents uh, both destinations uh, and so in order to allow uh, traffic uh, between this uh, spoke to the hub or vice versa, uh, we would need to go and um, add to our uh, spokes one edge templates or to the hub profile, we would need to add a specific uh, what we refer to as a steering profile uh, and also an application policy that is using this steering profile that we are going to create. Uh, in order to allow traffic uh, to flow through this uh, two IPsec tunnels that we have uh, that were created uh, between uh, the spoke and the hub. <clears throat> uh, so really, um, there's um, the missed intent model, or it is being referred to as uh, the user specifies what uh, he would want to do. In our case, uh, sending traffic from LAN0 on the spoke to uh, LAN0 on the hub. Um, and MIST intent model will uh, translate this to uh, a specific API and obviously uh, down to uh, the CLI commands that are being uh, executed on both of these SRX devices in order to allow, um, you know, um, policies, security policies uh, and specific uh, traffic steering uh, using APBR mechanisms and, uh, and or uh, NAT uh, policies. Uh, in order for traffic to uh, to reach its uh, destination. And so the intent model uh, is actually pretty simple. Um, it's basically referred to from where we are going to where we want to reach and the path that we would like this traffic to, uh, uh, to take. So in our case, uh, as we mentioned before, from is referred uh, in, you know, in, in MIST uh, UI configuration as uh, a network. Uh, I'm going from this network on the spoke to an application that represents either a layer seven app like, you know, Zoom, um, Office 365 or any other um, 5,000 or 4,000 and something applications that are supported out of the box uh, in SRX devices. Uh, or it can also represent a custom app that the simplest uh, definition of a custom app may be just uh, a prefix that in this case, we have defined a custom app uh, that is representing hub A LAN 0. And then the path that we would want to take, it is uh, represented by steering profile. Uh, and the steering profile is actually defining the different uh, paths that are available. In this case, we would define a steering profile that uses both of these IPsec tunnels. Um, and these tunnels can be used in uh, different um, uh, either ECMP, uh, per flow ECMP, or these tunnels can be also used as an ordered uh, based on a specific uh, preference. Um, but in essence, that's how uh, the intent model in MIST uh, would work. So if you, we look at uh, this uh, spoke device, really what we would need uh, to allow on the spoke is spokes LAN zero network that we have defined as 10.0.1.0.24, which is representing this host that is connected here, going to an application, which is our hub uh, A uh, LAN zero. 
And so uh, in order to achieve that, we would need to add to our uh, spokes template, uh, one edge configuration templates, we would need to add um, uh, two things. Number one, we would need to configure uh, a traffic steering profile, as mentioned. And the traffic steering profile, as I'll show you uh, in a second, uh, basically uh, saying, okay, well, this traffic that we see here from the spoke, uh, we wanted to use uh, both of these uh, IPsec tunnels that we have over WAN0 and WAN1. Uh, and we want to send traffic to the hub. And so once the traffic reached the hub, it would actually be forwarded to uh, the land side of the hub. Um, so we would set the strategy, whether we want to have it as ECMP or uh, the other options as an ordered or uh, some preferences. And then uh, the path type, uh, in this case, is going to be overlay because we would also have an option to send it to underlay if you want to do a local breakout or something, or even to a different LAN. Uh, this is between, you know, LAN to LAN traffic. Uh, and then you define uh, what, how many paths you want in that specific steering profile. So in this example, I'll create a steering profile called 2VPN. That's just a name. And then I would add both of these IPsec tunnels as part of the steering profile, right? So if you know one tunnel goes down, then we would actually have uh, the other tunnel available uh, as a backup. And once this uh, steering profile has been created, uh, we would use this steering profile in our application policy. And really, again, the application policy says, uh, give it a name. In this case, you know, I'll name it uh, spokes LAN0 to hub A LAN0. And it's uh, basically saying again, from where are you coming from? It's, you know, we are actually coming from uh, spokes uh, LAN zero. Uh, and then we want to go to our application, which is the destination to hub A LAN zero. And the action is going to be allow because you don't want to block this traffic specifically. And uh, for that, you're going to use the steering profile, which is to VPN that we have uh, created uh, as well. Uh, so with that, let's uh, switch to uh, MistUI and I'll show you how to configure this and apply on the device. Okay, so uh, if we navigate back to our uh, OneEdge template, this is the spoke configuration template. Click on spokes. Uh, again, just a reminder, the reason it is called spokes because this one single configuration template as you will see in future videos, will be applied uh, and assigned to multiple sites. So that's the power of MIST Automation, which you basically go ahead and, you know, uh, set your configurations uh, and, you know, throughout all your uh, organization sites. Uh, if all sites are the same uh, or maybe even not the same, you can use variables and adjust, uh, you know, uh, whatever needed per each site, but single template applies. Uh, so we'll look at it um, once we onboard our site two and three uh, and even more sites. But for now, uh, we also have defined uh, two WAN interfaces, WAN0 and one one, And we also have uh, added our uh, spokes LAN0, or this is the first interface we use, which is this uh, 10.01 uh, slash 24, uh, the interface uh, and IP uh, of that specific interface, 254. Uh, as well. And here is where we need to add a steering profile and an application policy. Okay, so to add uh, a traffic steering profile, we can uh, click on add traffic steering. And here is where uh, we would need to uh, give it a name uh, to VPN. Um, but really, you can name it uh, any name you want. And then the strategy, we can either uh, select ordered, which uh, you'll be able to uh, use specific uh, order, um, but by however many paths you'd have. I mean, in this case, if we have uh, overlay, uh, IPsec overlay one and two, you can define uh, whether your priority is going to be first sending over uh, one path and then, or switch uh, to the different path. But for now, I'll use ACMP. Uh, just a simplistic uh, traffic steering because uh, this video is the basics of how uh, traffic steering are being uh, created and uh, application policies. And then we can go ahead and add paths. So the type that we are adding is overlay, uh, but we have other uh, options as mentioned if uh, we select WAN. As we see, this is where we will send traffic to the underlay as local breakout. But for now, we're going to select overlay. 
And once you click on uh, the name of the overlay, you see that you have here both names, uh, which is represented by the destination uh, endpoint of this overlay. In this case, it's hub A10 and hub A11. So if you select 10, uh, and then we would also want to add an additional overlay, which is 11. Uh, then we can go ahead and click on add. And we can see that our uh, traffic steering uh, has been created, uh, name uh, to VPN. Okay, the next uh, thing we want to do is we want to add the application policy that is actually using the steering profile we have created. Um, I'll cover import application policies um, in the next video, but for now, uh, you can just simply add application policies from this uh, screen here. And the first thing we need, uh, we can uh, go ahead and give it a name. And uh, we wanted to call it spokes LAN 0 to hub A LAN 0. Mm -hmm. So we just use this name. And then here's where you select uh, from or the network. Uh, if you click on uh, add, you can see that we have two networks defined. Uh, one is the uh, hub A LAN 0 network, but we're actually selecting LAN 0 because we're going from the spoke to the hub. And then our application, we also define an application called hub A. This is a custom app that represents the prefix of LAN 0 on the hub. So you select uh, LAN 0. Your action can be either block or allow, uh, but in this case, we will uh, allow the traffic. Uh, you will always uh, have an option also to uh, select IDP uh, profile that you want to apply, uh, but to keep it simple, we at least need to select our uh, traffic steering profile. And this is the traffic steering profile we have created here on the top, which is part of our uh, traffic steerings. And, um, and that's it. And if you are happy with that, you would go ahead and save the template. Once we save the template, the configuration will be pushed uh, instantly to the device. And we can go ahead and uh, see the uh, security policy that has been applied uh, to the device. Okay, so let's uh, look at our uh, Site1 spoke device. So we can see, uh, basically, we have um, only two policies here, security policies. Uh, the first one is um, VPN overlay uh, to zone of VPN overlay. We basically have, by default, um, uh, the security uh, open uh, for our entire VPN if we have other sites. Uh, but then you can obviously block specific uh, addresses. But here is um, the policy that we just added. Uh, it's basically matching on our source network, which is 10.0.1.0. Uh, going to the hub uh, LAN side 10.0.100.0.24 uh, and we allow um, allow this traffic. Uh, also, if we take a look at our uh, routing uh, table, uh, we have an APBR routing instance created. Um, uh, that you can see we have um, advertised uh, from the hub 10.0.100.0 uh, uh, and it is actually pointing uh, to use our um, uh, IPsec overlay uh, tunnels uh, on the spoke. And by the way, uh, for now, if we look at the hub, We can see for now we have no policy to accept the traffic that is coming from the LAN side of the spoke. Uh, and for that, we would need to go ahead and uh, do some configuration on our uh, hub profile as well. By the way, just a quick note, uh, if you go to your uh, one edge devices, site one, uh, here's our uh, site one spoke device. You can always open a remote shell console to your device from within uh, Mist UI as well under utilities. Uh, we have um, different uh, tools here, but uh, one of them is remote shell. If you click on remote shell, uh, Mist would actually create a remote shell session uh, directly to your device. Uh, and this is uh, the same as executing uh, your commands, your CLI commands uh, from any, uh, any console. Uh, if you don't have a console to your uh, to your devices, 
Um, so the same thing here, uh, match policies. You can see that here's the uh, the policy that we have uh, created from 10.01 to 10.01.0. So that's just uh, a quick note uh, to mention that you can create uh, and you can always open a CLI command, CLI shell, remote shell from within Mist as well, uh, if you don't have console access. All right, so uh, once we have the correct policy applied on the spoke to uh, allow traffic from the LAN zero on the spoke uh, going to the overlay uh, to the overlay tunnels, uh, we would need to uh, have or to make sure that the hub accept traffics from um, from the overlays uh, going into the LAN zero uh, host as well. Uh, so in this case, very similarly, uh, the network uh, would be based on the missed intent model. The network would be spokes LAN 0, then the destination or the application is actually hub A LAN 0 as well. Uh, and very similarly to what we have uh, configured on the spoke template, the one edge template, we would need to configure on the hub profile uh, with slightly uh, different steering profile. Because again, the steering profile is actually saying uh, what would be the path that uh, the traffic would need to use in order to reach its destination. So in this case, the destination is the hub A LAN 0, right? And the path that we would want it to take once the traffic arrives into uh, the hub from the overlay tunnels, we would want this to take the path going to the LAN side. So this is why in this case, we'll create a, LAN, uh, a steering profile named uh, to LAN 0, uh, and the uh, path strategy, it doesn't matter because we only have one single link at this point uh, uh, towards the LAN. Uh, so path type is LAN instead of overlay. And uh, you choose the path, which is going to be uh, hub A. And then after we configure the steering profile, uh, we would also add the application policy. And the application policy is very similar again to the application policy we have configured on the one edge template, uh, the spoke, prof the, uh, the spoke. Uh, and the only difference is that again, the traffic steering profile here would point towards the LAN, which we will use the traffic steering we created instead of the traffic steering on the spoke that is pointing towards the VPN. Uh, so with that, let's switch to uh, the Mist UI and we'll configure the hub profile with these two uh, parameters, steering profile and the application policy. Okay, so let's go ahead and navigate to our uh, hub profile, uh, hub underscore A. And as we can see, uh, we only have configured previously 1011 and also uh, our LAN interface. Um, and here is where we would need to go and uh, add the steering profile, uh, traffic steering profile, and then uh, also the application policy uh, as we have discussed. So clicking on add uh, steering, uh, traffic steering profile, uh, we want to name the profile here uh, to LAN zero. Again, it's just a name. Uh, and we add the path here uh, and we select LAN instead of overlays we've selected on the spoke. And uh, here you'll be presented with all the, op the, the networks that you have uh, on your LAN side of the hub. In this case, we only have the first network only, so we have LAN zero. We select the network and um, select yes, and then we can go ahead and click on add. Okay, so once uh, we created the traffic steering profile, we can click on add application policy. We would need to give it a name. Uh, we wanted to use the same name as we used on uh, the spoke, because uh, that's kind of, uh, you know, but this is, this is only a name, so whatever you choose, uh, it's going to be fine. Um, and then you select your source, which is the spokes LAN zero uh, network. And then your application is the same as on the spoke. Uh, and here is where the difference uh, between the spoke one edge template and the hub profile. Uh, the traffic steering is towards the LAN side. And once you're happy with that, you can go ahead and click on save and the config will be uh, instantly pushed to the hub device uh, to allow this policy. Uh, let's switch to the uh, console and uh, just to verify that the policy has been uh, pushed to the device. So now if we can look at our uh, hub device, uh, we can see 
uh, that we have a new policy created, which is essentially uh, allowing the source of the spoke, uh, 10.0.1.0.24, uh, and the destination is the hub LAN0, which is uh, 10.0.100.0.24. Um, similarly, if we look at the uh, routing table, uh, we can uh, we can look at uh, our VPN overlay routing table, and you can see that we have uh, uh, the 1001 uh, network, which is attached to the spoke advertised, so the hub would know how the return traffic uh, to go through the overlay tunnels back to the spoke when the spoke sends traffic to the hub. By the way, a quick note uh, on uh, configuration changes and uh, uh, device insights. If you navigate to your hub device that we just pushed configuration to the hub, click on the hub device or any device, be it a spoke or a hub, there is a one edge insights. If you click on one edge insights, it brings you to a page where you have a lot of information on the hub or the spoke. but um, what I wanted just to cover here is to see that um, there is every configuration push uh, shows up here. Uh, you can actually see that uh, there is a config uh, changed or committed. Uh, um, you know, the change is actually user changed the config. It's, uh, you know, Shay Donovan changed uh, the config on hub A. Uh, the config configuration has been committed and there's another change uh, that was done on uh, the device as well. So you can always uh, follow up on what configs uh, has been changed uh, on 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 every every uh, every device. Um, same goes for one edge devices or our spoke. If you can go on our spoke device, one edge insights, uh, it brings up uh, this screen. Um, there's a lot of useful information here that we'll cover under the monitoring section. Um, but just uh, wanted to point out that the configurations and any changes uh, that are being done on the device are actually shows up here as well. Another thing I just wanted to mention uh, for those of you who are uh, familiar with Junos, um, I know we were looking at uh, policies here, uh, and in this case, you know, the source address is 10 0 1 0. So this is actually a name that uh, we use in our address book entry, uh, which is actually referring to uh, the IP uh, itself. So if you look at um, the address book entry here, you can actually see that uh, a name 10-0-1-0 underscore 24, it actually uh, results to an address 10.0.1.0 slash 24. Uh, so just note moving forward uh, that, um, you know, any address you see here, uh, although it doesn't look like uh, a valid uh, IP address, it's actually a name that refers to an address in our um, global address book or security address book uh, on each and every device. So this is just a quick note. Okay, so at this point, uh, we have uh, established connectivity between uh, Site 1 LAN 0 to uh, Hub A LAN 0. We have configured um, our steering profiles, uh, both on the one edge template for the spokes and on the hub profile for Hub A. And we also uh, configured on each one of the uh, templates, uh, the spokes and hub, uh, an application policy that is basically using the steering profile. However, <clears throat> there is another way uh, under MIST UI uh, to manage application policies in a central way. And that's what I want to cover next. So basically, as we noticed uh, in our configuration, the application policy on the spoke, uh, we named it as spokes LAN0 to hub A LAN0. It's actually the same configuration, exactly the same as um, on the hub profile, which is also, you know, uh, deliberately I use the same name, spokes LAN0 to hub A LAN0. Uh, and really the only difference is that on the spokes uh, uh, template, uh, we directing the traffic to the VPN and on the hub profile, we actually directing the traffic coming from the VPN towards the uh, LAN0, right? So instead of uh, writing all our policies twice, if they are basically the same, but just the difference is uh, the traffic steering, uh, what we can do is we can uh, go ahead and uh, write them once in a central way, 
and then import them uh, both to the uh, one edge templates on the spoke as well as on to the hub profile that assigned to hub A. So essentially the way it, would, it is done under MIST is that you would go ahead and configure your application policy or create an application policy. Again, only one time, which is gonna be the same. You give it a name, we'll use the same name. Uh, network from application to and the action is allow. And then under each one of the uh, uh, configuration templates, one edge template and the hub profile, we're gonna import this one application uh, policy that we have uh, uh, configured under MIST. And the only uh, difference is that we will uh, direct or assign the traffic steering on the spoke to point towards the VPN. And we will assign to this application policy that we're importing on the hub, uh, a traffic uh, steering profile that will point the traffic towards the LAN. Uh, so that's actually the difference. And again, you, you know, it's, it's actually saves time. And also there is a way to, I mean, you know, it's, it's better uh, to have it managed in a, in a, in a central way. So with that, let's switch to uh, Mr. Y and I'll show you how to do that. So the way we configure application policy, the central uh, application policy, is by navigating under organizations we can see here we have an option uh, called application policy and if we click on application policy uh, we can see we have no uh, application policies defined yet as a central uh, repository so we can go ahead and do uh, add application policy click on application policy and we can give it a name uh, spokes LAN 0 to hub A LAN 0. And again, similarly to what we have done previously, we select spokes. Uh, this is the network, spokes LAN 0. Uh, and the destination is uh, the application hub A LAN 0. And we can uh, define IDP in, uh, in a different uh, video. We'll cover IDP policies, etc. Uh, action is allow. And we can go ahead and click on save. Once we click on save, uh, we have our application policy centrally defined. So we can first go ahead and open our spokes template. That's the one edge template. We can navigate to our application policies that we have previously defined. Uh, and we can go ahead and delete this application policy. And here's where we see an option uh, which we previously used add application policy here or import application policy. So when we import application policy, this is where we'll be prompt into import from our central repository of all the application policies we have defined. For now we have only one, uh, but you'll see in uh, future videos uh, that we'll have much more application, application policies for all our uh, four or five different LAN segments and, um, you know, show, showcasing the NAT use cases. Uh, so that was going to be uh, pretty easy to understand. In any case, uh, you select uh, your specific policy you want to import, click on import. And here is the application policy shows up in grayed out because again, it is not written here under the spokes one edge uh, profile, but it's actually imported from the central repository. And the only thing we would need to add is that traffic steering, right? So when we click on uh, plus here, we can add the two VPN, which is our st traffic steering profile we have defined on the spoke. And in this case, what we are gonna have is the same thing we previously configured manually, but now we just imported uh, the application policy once from this central repository. So we go ahead and click on save. And then we're gonna navigate uh, to our hub profiles. This is hub A hub profile. And the same exact thing here. Previously, we have uh, written this application policy here uh, from scratch, uh, but then we can go ahead and delete this application policy, click on import application policy, import the same one, because again, we're trying to pick up the network on the hub 
coming from spokes going to the hub application, hub prefix. Um, so we click on import and then the traffic steering profile that we have on the hub is actually accepting traffic from the overlay going to the LAN. So we can click on add plus and here is where we can see, sorry, and here is where we can see to LAN. Uh, and then we can go ahead and click on save. So uh, the way to note that this application policy was configured in this uh, central repository is it is actually grayed out. Um, and that's actually going to be the same as we previously did. But, you know, I just wanted to show you this application policy central repository that here is where we're going to manage all our application policies to each and every direction. And then we're going to just import them into uh, the correspondent hub profile or uh, spoke uh, one edge template. Okay, so now uh, that we have established connectivity between uh, the spoke LAN VM uh, to the hub uh, LAN zero VM, we can also go ahead and quickly check uh, connectivity uh, by uh, logging into these uh, two VMs uh, on the spoke and on the hub. So if we switch back uh, to our uh, site one and hub one, uh, I have uh, a VM uh, attached to this site one and another LAN zero VM attached to hub A. Uh, also, as you recall, we have configured DHCP server on these two segments. So if I can uh, go ahead and look at the DHCP server binding. And this is in uh, LAN uh, routing instance. So as you can see, there's one uh, address uh, that was uh, being uh, leased to uh, on the GE002, which is our LAN VM. And if we can look at uh, this LAN VM here, and I look at the interface ENS3, I can actually see it's uh, 10.0.1.1. And also um, the uh, default route here uh, will be pointing to 1001254 um, towards this uh, spoke. Similarly, on the hub side, we have 10.0.101, which is the uh, VM on connected to G003 on the hub side, and again the same on the LAN VM. We have this uh, interface uh, that was uh, given through DHCP 10.0.101 and uh, the default route should be pointing um, uh, should be pointing to, uh, to 2.54 as well. Uh, default is going to 2.54. And by the way, just a quick note, uh, if we go back to our MIST UI and you go to uh, your site, uh, in this case, site one, you can actually see that we have DHCP statistics. So you can actually see the segment spokes LAN zero, right? And uh, we have assigned uh, in this DHCP server 10 uh, IPs and you know there's one list IP already uh, showing up here. So you can also um, follow your DHCP um, statistics from uh, from Mr. UI as well. And the same goes for uh, for the hub site. Um, very similar. You would see here that there's a one list uh, IP uh, towards this uh, hub A uh, LAN zero. And then we can go ahead and check uh, connectivity. So if we uh, on our site one LAN zero, we can ping uh, our hub uh, VM, which is uh, pinging. Uh, and obviously, if you were trying to ping from the hub, you would see that uh, there is no connectivity because we have not established any uh, policy or connectivity uh, from traffic uh, from hub uh, towards the spoke yet. Uh, also, please note if you would try to ping 888, so there's no connectivity from the LAN side uh, to the internet, as an example, uh, which we'll do next, we'll create a, a local breakout. Another thing that I have uh, under these VMs, um, I can uh, remote desktop uh, onto this VM. So as an example, here is I'm, I'm RDPing uh, remotely into my lab uh, to site one, LAN zero host one. 
And if we can uh, go ahead and uh, open a browser, uh, juniper.net or mist.com, you can see that uh, uh, this is not working. Obviously, we don't have connectivity. However, I have a small uh, HTTP server deployed on the uh, hub side, uh, LAN 0 VM. So if I try and open my browser uh, towards this VM, I can see that I land on a page which is uh, hub a LAN 0. So this is just a quick uh, way for me to uh, test connectivity as well, uh, either uh, HTTP or even uh, using HTTPS uh, 443. The, the reason I'm, I'm bringing this up is because uh, we will uh, be able to use this uh, method uh, to uh, when we when we'll talk about uh, destination NAT uh, forwarding and, and source NAT, so we'll uh, we'll be able to uh, to use this capability uh, to show uh, either SSH or uh, 443 traffic, as I mentioned in uh, part one, uh, section one um, of this uh, video series. Okay, so we have enabled then uh, communication from spoke to hub, but as mentioned, uh, we also need to look at the other direction. Uh, if hub A, uh, LAN0 VM here, wants to actually access uh, the spokes uh, VMs uh, as well. So in this case, uh, traffic will be coming, uh, the source is gonna be the hub A LAN0 network going to an application which is uh, sites uh, or spokes LAN0. And really, then the difference is, as you can see uh, here, um, the network uh, becomes hub A LAN0 and then the application is actually spokes LAN0 as well. So it's the same as previously, but you know the other, uh, the other direction. And so if we look at the uh, steering profile, again, you probably noticed that um, this steering profile that we will configure on hub A would actually uh, direct traffic uh, to VPN. Uh, because using, you know, trying to use the, both of the IPsec tunnels uh, going to uh, to the spoke. And then uh, the steering profile here on the spoke would actually direct traffic that is coming through uh, the overlay tunnels, the IPsec overlay tunnels towards the LAN side uh, of the spoke, which is the uh, host VM here on LAN0. And as before, we would then go ahead and configure uh, our central repository of uh, application policies, uh, which would actually going to be hub A LAN0 to spokes LAN0 uh, from hub A. And then the application again is spokes. And then we will do the same as previously. We're going to import this application both to the hub profile and to the spoke template. And the only difference would be then that uh, on the hub, will have the traffic steering pointing towards the VPN, using the traffic steering to VPN. And on the spoke, on this application policy, we'll be configuring uh, uh, using the traffic steering to LAN 0. So again, uh, pretty much the same, but uh, the opposite direction. And let's switch to uh, Mist UI and I'll show you quickly how to configure this as well. Okay, so we have uh, configured uh, the uh, opposite direction from hub to spoke. And just to uh, quickly check what do we have on the device, if we look at our spoke device, we can actually see an additional policy has been created here, uh, which the source address is 10.0.100.0, which is the hub side going to our destination, which is uh, 10.0.1.0, which is our spoke side. And if we look at uh, 
the hub policies, uh, we can see also an additional policy has been added, uh, which is actually allowing traffic from the hub, 10.0.100.0, going to uh, the spoke uh, and allow. And you can actually see here that it's coming from the hub A LAN 0 zone towards the VPN overlay zone. Uh, and here, the other way around at the spoke, it is actually coming from VPN overlay going into the spoke LAN 0 zone. Uh, and then, you know, if we uh, go and uh, try and ping now uh, from our uh, hub LAN A uh, to our spoke, uh, 10.0.1.1, we can see now we have connectivity uh, from hub to spoke. And obviously, if we ping uh, from the spoke side to the hub, uh, we can also uh, get across um, the VPN as well. Okay, so in the next video, we're going to look at uh, how we can add local breakout uh, for the uh, LAN 0 on the spoke um, if we want to send traffic to the internet as well uh, via the underlay, uh, not uh, necessarily going to uh, the VPN. So we look at how we add an application called uh, INET All or Internet All, uh, basically Quad Zero, and then how do we uh, add an additional uh, steering profile uh, and application policy to allow this local breakout to the internet as well. So with that, uh, see you in the next uh, video and uh, thanks for watching.